Will Bitcoin collapse? Have you thought about the future of Bitcoin? Beyond all that hype, new digital currency, digital gold, disruption, disintermediation, and so on. What will happen when the dust settles? Is it a bubble? And will it burst? Frankly, I don't see a bright future for Bitcoin, at least within the purpose it has been introduced. It had to become electronic cash. When was the last time you bought anything for Bitcoins? And now, when it has become evident that this strategy is failing, it's time to question its utility and value, and perhaps change the strategy. Hi, my name is Dr. Alexey Konashevich. You are on Blockchain State. And by the tradition on this channel, I will start with straightforward answers. In a moment, you will discover why Bitcoin is more likely to fail unless it changes its direction. And I will not only draw a hypothetical picture, but I will show empirical evidence, figures that show discouraging long-term projections and the conclusion that comes out of all this. First, Bitcoin, as any other cryptocurrency, is not currency. Even though it can be used as money, it will not become so in its true meaning. Second, Bitcoin as a technology is the most reliable and resilient digital public repository that humankind has ever created. And therefore, the only reasonable use of it is to utilize the network as a platform for Web3, decentralized applications and digital tokens and so on. And it has everything to become so. Bitcoin as an ecosystem should get a sustainable mechanism to support its strategic initiatives, which include an additional incentive to support the demand for Bitcoin and hence its price when it is used to run blockchain-based applications a small portion of bitcoins must be taken as a system fee in every application transaction. Fees should be directed from every transaction to the development of the bitcoin technology and its ecosystem. This will address the strategy of the commons and ensure that the bitcoin bubble will not burst but transform into cutting-edge technology worldwide. Now let's unpack all this. Bitcoin as a concept became known in 2008 when the mysterious Satoshi Nakamoto published his paper online, beginning with the words A purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Reading the paper Bitcoin Peer-to-Peer -peer Electronic Cash System, we understand that the strategy was to become a global peer-to-peer -peer currency. Now, after so much time having it up and running, we understand that the strategy wasn't realized. Do we massively use bitcoins to pay for products and services? People buy bitcoins so then just to sell them. Pure speculation. Some people can object saying that bitcoin can still be used as money. And I don't argue. Indeed, it can. Theoretically, many things can be used as money. Shells, for example. But it's impractical and unrealistic for many reasons. Does it mean the concept is false and its strategy failed if we look at it only within the declared goals to become a fiat money alternative? The answer is yes, it failed. After almost 15 years of work, after it has mined 92% of all Bitcoins that can ever exist according to its protocol, Bitcoin hasn't become a massively used global digital cash that replaced centralized financial institutions. In the current situation, I see two significant problems for its initial strategy. First, if the majority of people buy Bitcoins in exchange for their dollars, to sell them and get more dollars, there is no threat to the conventional currency. It cannot replace or compete with the fiat money. There is no way Bitcoin will disrupt the fiat system in this scenario. Secondly, people have no interest in using Bitcoins. Many even don't understand how it can be used. They just buy, hodl and sell, no utility. It's not used for any productive purpose. Therefore, it has all the signs of a bubble and financial pyramid. 
But wait, what it has been doing all that 15 years? How did it even survive? Well, because of two things. Speculation, and I've already said that its market value is mostly driven by the belief in its disruptive potential. And secondly, it's still an absolutely unique technology with enormous potential, which is far from being realized, but not as money. This is the core answer. We'll get to it soon. You will ask, where is the evidence that Bitcoin will fail? Why would its price not grow constantly? Even if it's just common sense, any bubble will burst at some point. Let's take a look at some figures if they support this conclusion. You see a chart that shows the market dominance of cryptocurrencies according to their capitalization. The market capitalization of all cryptocurrencies has been increasing all this time, as well as Bitcoin. In the very beginning, from 2009 till around 2014, there was only Bitcoin, so it had 100% of the market. Then appeared other cryptocurrencies. Throughout the years, Bitcoin lost its dominance. Nowadays, it is only 40%, and the graphic shows a long-lasting downfall trend. Yes, its capitalization enhanced the price can keep growing, and there is no contradiction here as the bubble still grows. But if we make a projection for the next 3 to 5 years, it can lose at least half its dominance against other cryptocurrencies. If you critically analyze this graph, you will find that cryptocurrencies dramatically lose their value. They lose their positions to the second generation cryptocurrency platforms with consumer value and use. Ethereum, the second in this list, has 18% of the market and constantly grows. Even though it is called a cryptocurrency, in reality it's a platform for decentralized applications, digital assets, decentralized autonomous organizations, and decentralized finances. Users need either Ethereum cryptocurrency to pay fees for transactions on Ethereum dApps. Either is the blood of this system. Like red cells, this cryptocurrency delivers valuable assets within the organism. And even though a lot of people buy either just to sell it in the future, their expectation and its value is based on its utility. Let's have a look at the next. Number three is Tether USDT. 6%. It's not a cryptocurrency. It's a stable coin packed to the US dollar. We have to exclude it from this equation. Interestingly, Tether technically is not even a standalone blockchain network. It's an application that runs across several blockchain platforms. This again proves the rise of blockchain based application on platforms. Next is BNB Binance Coin 4.8%. It's an application platform. Then we see USD coin with 3.8%, which is again a stable coin. The 6 XRP Ripple coin has almost 2% and it's an application platform. Then again a stable coin Binance USD with 1.5%. Next Cardano is 1% is a platform. Dogecoin is finally another pure cryptocurrency like Bitcoin in this list. It's number 9, slightly above 1%. The next is Polygon, around 1%. It's again an application platform. And then others, 17% of the crypto market, with a growing portion of platforms and shrinking pure cryptocurrencies in this figure. You can easily check it on CoinMarketCap. That brings us to an empirical conclusion. Bitcoin and other pure cryptocurrencies lose their value. So suppose nothing game-changing happens in the middle to long-term projections, we will probably see the loss of the market by Bitcoin, which supports my theoretical analysis of its utility lack in the financial bubble. Failure can happen evolutionary. However, this graph shows the dramatic fall of Bitcoin during the so-called crypto winter in 2017-2018. Its dominance dropped from 70-80% to less than 40 and never returned back to the previous heights. My point here is that it can happen again, so Bitcoin will rapidly get to the bottom. We also should expect a psychological line of Bitcoin losing ground to Ethereum. 
that can lead to mass disbelief of people and change public opinion from disruptive to useless technology. However, it is possible to change this trend. Follow me to the next chapter to learn how. Meanwhile, I urge you to click pause and hit the like button and subscribe as YouTube algorithms understand that the video is worthwhile only when viewers actively interact with it. And then please write your opinion in the comment section. This video can become a game changer, who knows? Bitcoin is the most secure public digital repository that humankind has ever created. It's an undeniable fact. Don't get me wrong, it's not perfect. But among other technologies, it's number one in terms of ability to secure data, to make it immutable and resilient to any threats and attacks. It's the only public system that has been running globally for the last 14 years, more than 14 years, without any significant disruptions. And nothing can cover this Trump card. Not even energy concerns or wild talks about Bitcoin vulnerabilities and centralization. Let's take a close look at these issues. It is irrelevant to compare it with the energy consumption of any country or industry. We don't question industries that people need and appreciate. Automobile production needs to melt in cast metal to produce cars with combustion or electric engines. Metal production consumes enormous amounts of energy, incomparable to the whole crypto industry. We don't question it because we understand the value of this technology. We cannot stop using cars. Here is another example. McKinsey's report in 2020 states that the fashion industry produces CO2 more than France, Germany and the United Kingdom combined. In contrast, a large portion of clothes appear on landfill, being worn in the US on average only seven times. This is outrageous, but the fast fashion exists despite all energy concerns. My point here is that there are other industries that should be alarmed. I see only one problem with the cryptocurrency. People don't understand the utility of the cryptocurrency. The value of Bitcoin is underestimated, which is why these talks arise. However, the opposite is also true. If Bitcoins are bought only to be sold with no purpose and no utility, this is such a waste of resources and irresponsible towards our planet. Can blockchain protect data? Before addressing the concerns about the vulnerabilities of Bitcoin, I would like to explain one important thing about blockchain and its ability to protect data because there is so much misunderstanding. The chain of blocks connected with cryptographic hashes cannot protect anything. It's a method of detecting unauthorized changes in the data structure. It's not even what Satoshi Nakamoto invented. Two researchers, Haber and Stanetta, introduced this method in 1991. You can watch my video about it, find the link in the description. The point here is that the blockchain as a technology is not about the chain of blocks. It's a combination of various methods and conditions under which it can make the data immutable, but it not necessarily will. The copy of the ledger being distributed in a peer-to-peer -peer network becomes immutable and secured only when the network scales up. Bitcoin hash rate indicates the current complexity of computations in the network, the scale, if you wish, if we are talking about the proof-of-work protocol. The embodiment of this technology in any specific network is what really matters. There is a big difference between a network with three nodes and 3,000 nodes or 10,000 nodes independently operating around the world under proof-of-work consensus protocol, which is basically an open competition of miners. Bitcoin, among all other implementations of blockchain technology, reached that scale that makes the stored data practically immutable and irrevocable. It's more a social phenomenon than a technological one, which now appears not to be a currency, but an electronic 
chronological storage. A digital fortress where no data can be corrupted. No transaction and attached data to it can be tampered with or altered. Bitcoin as the network reached that level that no other blockchain or other technology, either centralized or decentralized, could reach so far. Is Bitcoin centralized or vulnerable? No, Bitcoin is not centralized or vulnerable. It's nonsense. You can hear it from people who still don't understand the nature of this technology. You could hear talks about issues with mining pools and their centralization. Well, the concentration of mining farms in certain countries can potentially increase risks. But the beauty of this technology lies in its open competitive consensus protocol. Let's put it simply, pools control nothing. Once the pool decides to compromise the system or the one who gets the control over the pool, say authorities, it will fall apart because it's just a constellation of independent nodes worldwide. The mechanism of pool interaction is quite simple. Once a node joins a pool as a task, it gets a part of a block mining computation. They just distribute the work. This node takes this portion of work, and that node takes another portion. So they don't overlap within the pool. Pools cannot hold nodes hostage. Pools only coordinate their work while nodes willingly join this collaboration and can leave it at any time. More so, nodes constantly migrate from one pool to another. If a country decides that cryptocurrency mining is not welcomed, miners flee the country, relocating their computational resources to a friendlier jurisdiction. The power of Bitcoin is in the absence of an authority that can become a single point of failure. Miners share their computational power with the network without formal conditions. They don't ask anyone's permission. Only one thing matters, the blockchain protocol consensus, which is effectively an open source computer program that they have to install on their nodes to join the network from any point on the planet. This is how the network gets a large, reliable, self-organized and self-governed global infrastructure. This is a real phenomenon of our time. How Bitcoin can be used for applications? For example, Ethereum can be used to create digital tokens and various non-financial applications, NFTs, games like CryptoKitties and so on. Ultimately, any blockchain is a database. Sometimes blockchain is called a ledger. Tokens are database records that are attached to user addresses and controlled by their private keys. But where does it originate from? At some point, Bitcoin enthusiasts understood that it could be used as a public repository. Wrapping some user data in coin spending transactions and publishing them on blockchain can secure this data. So from publishing messages and small images for fun, developers eventually came to the understanding of the utility of this feature. They started creating colored coins and other kinds of tokens and digital assets that sit on top of a cryptocurrency until someone came up with the idea of developing a cryptocurrency as a platform for applications. So the era of dApps, decentralized applications and Web3 began. Ethereum became a cornerstone of this development as the first Turing complete system that extends the capability of programming dApps. Nevertheless, non-Turing complete systems are underestimated. In my videos, I explained how to design a land registry system, for instance. I illustrated that the discussion of Turing completeness is irrelevant because it's related to cryptocurrency. But the digital tokens are at the level above. Nothing limits any application design on Bitcoin. You will see the link to that series of videos in the description. Cryptocurrency in this case is the driving mechanism. 
its miners reward for the creation of new blocks. With new blocks, they create new Bitcoins and sell them on the market to cover their expenses and to get profit from it. But people buy such crypto not because they believe in their disruptive potential, but because it's practically needed to run transactions in their applications. Users pay crypto as fees. This is the moment when cryptocurrency makes a difference as it becomes the driving gear of all this infrastructure. It ensures its self-governance. As more people need crypto to pay transaction fees, the more incentive for mining. As the network of miners grows, this infrastructure becomes larger and more resilient. The question is that at this point, the largest distributed infrastructure in the world holds on the belief in its great future, with no actual signs that this future will come unless the technology is properly used. Nevertheless, I cannot say there are no remarkable examples of such use on Bitcoin. For example, the above-mentioned stablecoin USDT exists as digital tokens built on several blockchains, including Bitcoin Cash. There is an independent Omni protocol project that provides tools for building digital assets on top of Bitcoin. There are better implementation of app development techniques that I found on other Bitcoin compatible blockchains, but it's a talk for another video. My point here is there is no lack of knowledge and tools for app development on Bitcoin. More so, there are no limits to the development of comprehensive applications. Unfortunately, this Turing completeness thing deeply misled people. The problem is that Bitcoin leaders and enthusiasts got stuck in the paradigm of disruptive technology which will do away with financial institutions and fiat currencies. On one of Bitcoin's wiki pages, you can find a discussion that publishing user data with developing applications on blockchain is a bad idea because it bloats the blockchain. Dear crypto leaders, I'm sorry, but this is the only utility function this technology has that makes a difference. If Bitcoin leaders and large hodlers get rid of delusions and see the broader picture, there will be a few things that should be done as preconditions of further development. Bitcoin as an ecosystem should get a sustainable mechanism to support its strategic initiatives. As to this moment, all of its development relied on contributions of donors. There are more sustainable ways for a long-term project. The ecosystem needs an incentive to support the demand for Bitcoin, which will address the problems of the price drops. To run blockchain-based applications, a small portion of Bitcoins must be taken as a system fee in every application transaction. From every transaction, there must be fees directed to the development of Bitcoin technology and its ecosystem, which will address the strategy of the commons and ensure that the Bitcoin bubble will not burst, but transform into cutting-edge technology globally. But this is a discussion for another video. Stay tuned. See you in the next video. Like, subscribe and share it. Thanks, mate. Steel, an absolutely unique technology with enormous potential.